Hey guys, uh, I hope everything's going well. Uh, I know that this is a little down period and we haven't really seen each other a lot, but I just, I hope things are going well. Um, I hope you guys are having fun with your families. This is a great time to uh, just kind of hang out and uh, discover new things and just have fun with your family. Uh, so um, today we're going to be reading from uh, Judges 16, 4 through 20. Um, it's the story of Samson and Delilah. Uh, and if any parents are that following along, I'm reading from uh, NLT. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the Valley of Sorek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what it would take to tie you up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I would become as weak as anyone else. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in, the, in, in one of the inner rooms of her house. And she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it is burned by a fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, if I were tied up with brand new ropes that, have not, that had never been used, I'd become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied them up with them. The men were hiding them in the rooms as before. And again, Delilah, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Then Delilah said, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, if you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric of your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I'd become as weak as anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. Then she tightened it with the loom shuttle and then again she cried out samson the philistines have come to capture you but samson woke up pulled back the loom shuttle and yanked his hair away from the loom in the fabric then delilah pouted how can you tell me i love you when you don't share your secrets with me you've made fun of me three times now and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong she tormented him with her nagging tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, so she sent for Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistines, so the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring them down, and her strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But when, but he didn't realize the Lord had left him. Yeah, and uh, that's the end of the story. So, uh, Okay, so we heard that story from Jake, uh, so let's dig into it now. So, in this passage, we see, um, let's go, actually go back up to the top. We learn about Samson, and Samson uh, is a character in the Bible. He's an Israelite that God used to uh, protect the Israelites. So this was during the time of uh, the Judges, which is an area of, or a time in Israelite's history when there were no kings. And so they were getting attacked by all these uh, enemies and getting destroyed a lot. And, you know, it was, it was mostly punishment because they had given up on God. And so essentially God sort of was like, all right, I'm going to take a break from you because you guys aren't honoring what I've asked you to honor and do the things that I've asked you to do. But they were still God's people and he still cared about them. So there was a point when it was like, okay, enough's enough. They need to be saved because their enemies are destroying them. And so God would call a some 
it seemed kind of random. Some random people was like, all right, you, you're going to go do some great things and save uh, my people. So Samson was one of these people. They were called judges. And God basically said, Samson, you're going to be like the Hulk. You're going to be this mighty warrior that can is super strong and can just rip everything apart and destroy all the enemies super easily. Um, and in fact, the story right before this, earlier in that chapter, it says Samson carries away Gaza's gates. Uh, Gaza was a city, and Samson uh, was they were he was trying to like his enemies were trying to hunt him, and he just picks up the entire wall and all the gates with it, and is like doo -doo -doo, and runs off with it. He says, "I this you know this is in my way," so he just picked it up and moved it. Which is crazy, and obviously his strength comes from God, and God needed him to, uh, or is using him to save the Israelites. But Samson wasn't that great of a guy, and that's the first thing I want us to learn. So in this story, the very first thing it says, Samson fell in love with a woman, um, and then the rulers of the Philistines, let's read it right here, the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So the plan was, we're going to set a trap. We're going to use this woman that Samson loves and use her to get to him so that we can destroy him and destroy the Israelites. That was their plan. Um, and Samson tried to resist, but as you know the story, uh, he, you know, he said, well, you know, use bowstrings, right? And then uh, that didn't work. And he's like, oh, you know, do this, use ropes. And... Because he knows his secret. His secret is that if his hair gets cut, then um, he'll lose his strength. But he didn't want to share that. And, and that's right, because God told him that he shouldn't let him lose his power. But he cared too much about this woman. And uh, the, um, the Philistines were using her as a trap for Samson. And so eventually he gives in. Delilah's pout pouting. Um, and then she... Yeah, right there, Lila pouted, you know, you say you love me, but you don't share your secrets, um, but he's not putting God's uh, will ahead of his own, he's like, oh, okay, fine, I, I like this girl, so I'm going to give in, um, but Samson had a choice, and God used him despite the fact that, you know, in other stories you see, Samson makes some big mistakes, he's not the greatest guy. But God can still use people who aren't the greatest. And um, he does that. Uh, th that's sort of what he does. He, he knows that all people are broken. All people have failed in some way or the other. And yet he still uses us um, for his glory. He still uses us to do great things. Um, so even if you've made mistakes. Here comes my cat to say hello. Even if you've made mistakes. Um. God can still use you, but you do have to watch out for the traps that Satan sets. And Samson sort of did, but in the end, you see that he uh, he actually got caught in one of the traps. And that's what Pastor Steve's going to teach us about in just a second. Okay, real quick before we go, I just want to let you know about our challenge. Each week, we're going to be doing new challenges on our midweek lesson, and then you submit what you're going to show by Tuesday of the next week, and then if it's awesome, I'll feature it in our video. So your challenge this week is build the biggest, most awesome blanket or whatever fort in your house, and then have your parents send me a picture of it. So they can either text me or email me a picture of your fort. So the bigger the better, the awesomer the better. Make super big, super awesome forts in your house. Send me a video or a picture of it, and I'll put it in the next week's video, okay? Go do it.